How crazy must it have been in 2010 that this album and Kanye West's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy both came out on the same day? Also, how ironic was it that Nicki featured on that album and Kanye featured on this one? Man, that must have been a fun time for hip-hop. Welcome back to 10 Years Later, the series where I talk about albums from the 2010s that were either impactful to me, impactful to music in general, very popular, or just worth revisiting 10 years later for good or bad reasons. And this has been one of the biggest ones, an album that I was very interested in looking at as soon as I started planning out my schedule for this series. As you can tell from the title, the album that we will be talking about today is the 2010 Nicki Minaj album Pink Friday. Nicki Minaj, you know her, you either hate her or love her. She is one of the biggest names in hip-hop and she has been far and away one of the biggest women in hip-hop, if not the single biggest woman in hip-hop. And Nicki obviously has her share of detractors and right or wrong there are plenty of things she has been criticized for, from supposedly being a Lil' Kim copycat to having a seemingly standoffish attitude toward other women in hip-hop to several other bizarre media acts, to even the bad rep that her stan army, the Barbs, tends to receive. But all of that aside, you can't deny the impact that Nicki's music has had and the massive success that she's seen in her illustrious career. Whether or not she's seen as the objective best, Nicki Minaj, by most reasonable metrics, became perhaps the most commercially successful female rapper ever. When this album released, it was doing numbers that hadn't been seen since Lauryn Hill in the late 90s. And where Lauryn Hill mostly stepped away from the spotlight, after her lone album, Nicki has stayed in it and maintained her success. Even this year, well over a decade into her career, Nicki has reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 twice, thanks to a pair of massive feature appearances. Nicki's legacy will never be questioned no matter how polarizing she is, and while her 2009 mixtape Beam Me Up Scotty established her, this album along with her numerous massive feature appearances really catapulted her into the mainstream. I never got to listen to the full album, but of course I know many of its biggest singles, so I was interested in hearing the album in its entirety. There are a number of different versions of it, but the one I listened to was 16 tracks and just over an hour. Not surprising, Nicki's albums are usually pretty long. And I gotta say, I was a bit surprised. I didn't anticipate that I would enjoy this album as much as I did. Again, I had enjoyed a few of the singles back in the day, and I still enjoy them now, but I wasn't sure if the full album was gonna do it for me. Fortunately, I could actually say it did. When it comes to the singles, my favorite when I was younger was Moment for Life. And it's still a personal favorite too. It's a more confident song with encouraging lyrics about making it and finding success, but set to the tune of a somewhat ethereal instrumental. Nicki switches between rapping and singing nicely here, and Drake drops a typically solid guest verse too. Super Bass might also still be one of Nicki's greatest songs. I love how carefree it is and how much fun it has with itself. I feel like on this track, Nicki isn't wrapped up in any pettiness or anything that would be caused for drama. She's just having fun and making a track with enjoyable, electronic and poppy, but still memorable production. Equally exciting rapid fire flows and one of the most sticky choruses she's ever made. I also remember listening to the track Save Me a little bit before going into this album. It's a more R&B influenced song that surprisingly is the only one on here with no rapping. I actually like it though. Nicki's vocals are solid as she sings about loneliness and wanting to be saved. Those lighter vocals sound a bit more broken and they work well for the vibe of the song. Beyond that, the album tends to split a little bit into two styles, the more rap heavy Nicki and the more sing heavy Nicki. And naturally when Nicki raps, you know what to expect. Braggadocio. And there's plenty of that here. Hell, the album literally kicks off with a song called I'm the Best, which is Nicki's detailed look into her come up and rise to fame. It does play a bit into the popular stylings of some of Nicki's hits, with a much brighter beat and Nicki singing on the chorus. She sounds very confident on her verses, though I do think the chorus can feel a bit tacky. Nicki's vocals aren't bad, but they're just mixed so weirdly that it doesn't fit. Though Roman's Revenge is a much harder song where Nicki dives into one of her many alter egos, Roman Zelansky. The beat is a bit more minimal, but it's hard-hitting enough to back up Nicki's colder verses, as well as the excellent rapid-fire flows from Eminem. Yes, some of his lyrics haven't aged as well, you can say that about most of his catalog, but Slim Shady aids Nicki excellently on a track that's still extremely memorable. Did It On Him is another more braggadocious song with a darker electronic beat, but it's easily a low light on the album for me. Nicki slows down her flow and still has a few decent punchlines, but I don't think her verses are as compelling here, and the chorus is honestly just pretty boring. Not even Safari's ad-libbing helps make it more interesting. Blazin' sounds rather bright and Nicki does kind of mix between rapping and singing on the song, but I do love how hard she goes on her verse. The chorus is rather catchy and Kanye goes pretty hard on a good feature appearance. Here I Am takes things a bit lighter and lyrically tackles Nicki's relationship with the media, especially in the context of being a woman in hip hop. It's got some decent flows from Nicki and I like the analogy of comparing her treatment in the media to that of a toxic relationship, although I could very much do without the bonus track Blow Your Mind, because yes, Nicki goes hard and the beat is much bigger than a lot of the more 
poppy songs on the album, but the production can feel a bit unfocused and too abrasive, and the combined contributions from Danny Schofield and Safari are just really annoying. I also found myself rather annoyed by the closer to the deluxe edition of the album, Money. The beat is definitely bouncy and Nicki rides it well enough, but the chorus here is definitely one of Nicki's weakest. In a lot of ways, the song feels to me like Stupid Ho before Stupid Ho ever existed, and honestly, that's the last Nicki Minaj song that I want to think about. While Nicki's obviously known for her raps, though, she does have a few moments on the album where she mellows out a bit and oftentimes sings. Personally, I never really had a problem with her singing. I know some people have, but I haven't minded it, and that doesn't change here. I already mentioned tracks like Save Me and Moment for Life that are a little bit more sing-heavy, but another notable example is Right Through Me, which is a bit more of a personal track for Nicki. She still raps a bit, but her tone feels a bit more emotional, and the song feels a bit more R&B influenced. Personally, I like the song. For as simple as the production is, it's nice, easy listening, and even if the chorus is a bit repetitive, Nicki manages to make it pretty catchy and her vocals work well for it. It's more of a sad bop, but it's a pretty good one at that. Fly is also much poppier, featuring a chorus from Rihanna and a much more empowering message about overcoming hardships to prosper. It's actually a sweet jam and for as simple as the lyricism and general vibe can be, I think Nicki and Rihanna are such solid performers that they take the song up a notch. One track that doesn't work as well though is Check It Out featuring Will I Am, which is an electronic pop song that sounds like something Kesha would have been doing back in 2010. I do love the sampling of Video Killed the Radio Star by Buggies, but otherwise it's a pretty droning electronic track that wastes Nicki as well as Will I Am and only stands out in the worst of ways. Fortunately, D-Rolled Nicki is another interesting lyrical journey. As Nicki talks to her old self, specifically the mixtape Nicki that many felt wasn't there on this album since she supposedly sold out and started doing more poppy songs. This is definitely a pop-leaning song, yes, but I do think it works on the strength of Nicki's emotional flows and solid singing on the chorus as well as the way she discusses the changes in her style with her older self. Perhaps the biggest singy track though is Your Love, which is surprisingly mushy and obviously more love-driven than many of the other tracks here. There's something stupidly catchy about it though. The beat is obviously simple and poppy, but Nicki's chorus is way too memorable and her performance as a whole makes this a really fun track. And the closer to the standard edition of the album, Last Chance, is a surprising song that feels like it has some rock elements to it, specifically with the electronic guitars. I do love Nicki's energy on the song and her rapid fire flows are great. My only real issue with it is Natasha Bedingfield's chorus. It's not that she sounds bad, but the chorus itself feels so bare and forgettable compared to a lot of what else is here. Overall, I was pretty surprised by how much I enjoyed a vast majority of this album. I expected that going back to it, all I was going to hear was dated, bland tracks that didn't show Nicki at her full potential, but much of what's here still sounds great. Yes, it does lean a lot into the pop sounds, and maybe Nicki isn't always rapping as hard as she can, but frankly, I like the amount of versatility she showed on here. She proved that she could be a solid singer and rapper, and the production she's on top of goes through a lot of sounds and styles, from pop to R&B to hip-hop to even a bit of rock, too. The album works in spite of its simplicity, and many of the biggest tracks are still very enjoyable. I will say, though, that while the record is consistently pretty good, the low points on here are pretty big lows, and the album got bogged down just a bit by how weak the bonus tracks on the deluxe edition were. I can't help but wonder how much better this record would be if a few of the tracks were cut off. Also, I know there are editions of the album that end up reaching 20 tracks, and I've heard the bonus tracks on those editions of the album aren't much better than the two on the 16 track version, so maybe there could have been a few cuts. All in all, though, I think Pink Friday remains a surprisingly fun listen, and a nice debut album from one of hip-hop's biggest names. Back in 2010, I really didn't care all that much about Nicki Minaj, so I feel like I wouldn't have enjoyed this album at all. Listening to it now, though, I'm surprised to say that I quite liked the album. If I had to put it on my scale, it would probably get a good rating from me. It honestly came close to an excellent rating, but the lows are low enough to sap the record of its full potential, and I think it would have gotten an excellent if not for those two bonus tracks. Still, Nicki's debut album has plenty of highlights that are still fun listens to this day, and it nicely set the stage for one of the biggest voices in hip-hop over the 2010s. But that's just my opinion on this album. What did you guys think about it? Did you listen to it back in 2010? Do you still listen to it now? Did you love it then? Hate it then? Love it now? Hate it now? Are you just completely indifferent towards Nicki Minaj's music? And what's your favorite Nicki album? Is it still Pink Friday, or would you consider one of her other albums your favorite? Whatever your thoughts are, whatever your experiences are, leave them down in the comments. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe, thank you. If not, it's no big deal. I totally understand. And if you guys want to support my passion for content creation by subscribing to my OnlyFans, where I create exclusive music review and poetry content for $4.99 a month, the link to that is in the description. Of course, it's okay if you can or if you don't want to, but I appreciate anyone who does. And moving along in 10 years later, we are close to the end of the busy month
month of November. The next album that I'll be talking about in this series is the Black Eyed Peas album, The Beginning, which is quite the ironic title if I do say so myself. Obviously, I'll have more to say about the album when I talk about it for the video, so stay tuned for that. But until next time, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.